The Isaiah scroll from the Qumran caves is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable discoveries from before the time of Christ. It accurately predicts his coming and is nearly 700 years older than Jesus Christ. The Isaiah manuscript, one of the seven scrolls found in Qumran in 1947, is the largest and best preserved among them. It represents the only biblical book to have survived in its entirety. This manuscript truly captures the essence of Christianity with its precise predictions about Jesus Christ and his time on earth. There is one piece of writing in this scroll that will astonish you. But before we dive into that, take a moment to subscribe so we can make God the biggest channel in the world. In the 1940s, the Dead Sea Scrolls were unearthed in the caves of Qumran. Among them was a complete copy of the Book of Isaiah. This discovery was part of a collection of over 1,100 ancient documents and more than 100,000 fragments. Remarkably, a portion of every Old Testament book was recovered, except for the Book of Esther. What makes the discovery of the Book of Isaiah so extraordinary is that it was found completely intact, spanning over 25,000 words. As one of the longest books in the Bible, finding a complete copy was an extraordinary event. The Great Isaiah Scroll alone contains more than 25% of all the biblical text found among the Dead Sea Scrolls and is nearly fully preserved. Virtually every part of all 66 chapters of Isaiah is present, with text written clearly enough for modern Hebrew readers to understand. The scroll closely aligns with the wording and orthography of medieval manuscripts. The Dead Sea Scrolls were written primarily in Hebrew, with other languages including Aramaic, Greek, and Paleo-Hebrew. But how were these scrolls discovered and who recognized their immense significance? The story goes like this. In 1947, a group of teenagers was tending their sheep and goats near the town of Qumran, located on the shore of the Dead Sea. This location later gave the Dead Sea Scrolls their name. One of the young shepherds, while searching for a lost goat, tossed a rock into a cave and heard pottery shatter. Curious, he went to investigate and discovered a collection of jars, some of which contained scrolls. These scrolls held texts that were over 2,000 years old. Following this discovery, archaeologists flocked to the region, recovering thousands of additional fragments. When pieced together, these fragments form between 800 and 900 manuscripts. Why are the scrolls from this random cave so significant for the Christian faith? Here's where things get truly shocking. As Christians, there are key aspects to understand about the Dead Sea Scrolls and their relation to our beliefs. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting us by clicking the Super Thanks button below. Your support helps us continue sharing the transformative story of Jesus. The most important is that they validate the scriptures we hold dear. If you research this topic, you'll find arguments both for and against the Dead Sea Scrolls supporting modern translations of scripture. Some argue that the scrolls confirm the reliability of scripture, while others suggest they contradict modern versions. In my view, these scrolls support our current translations of Scripture. They are meaningful to Christians and anyone who reads the Old Testament because of the consistency in their messaging. During the time these scrolls were written, there were no photocopiers or word processors. Everything was meticulously copied by hand. Hebrews carefully preserved the texts. When the scrolls were found, they became the oldest copies available confirming much of what had already been translated into English versions of the Bible. Did you know that the book of Isaiah is incredibly important to the Christian faith because it contains 19 messianic prophecies that point directly to Jesus? Before the discovery of what would later be known as the Great Isaiah Scroll, the earliest manuscript evidence, for the book was dated to around 900 A.D., nearly a millennium after Jesus. 
This fact had been a focal point for Bible skeptics, who argued that prophecies couldn't be fulfilled if they were recorded after the events. The Great Isaiah Scroll, however, changed everything. Skeptics closely observed as the scroll underwent rigorous testing. These tests confirm not only the date of the scroll, but also its content. The discovery proved that the text of Isaiah had remained unchanged for centuries, affirming the reliability of the Old Testament scripture. Isaiah can be thought of as a miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters, much like the 39 books of the Old Testament, are filled with judgment against immoral and idolatrous people. This scroll remains a cornerstone of Christian faith, offering profound insight into the unchanging truth of God's Word. Judah has sinned, the surrounding nations have sinned, and the entire earth has sinned. Such blatant sin cannot go unpunished forever, and judgment must come. However, the last 27 chapters of Isaiah, much like the 27 books of the New Testament, offer a message of hope. They proclaim that the Messiah is coming as both a savior and a sovereign, destined to bear a cross and wear a crown. Before you go any further, if you feel blessed by Jesus like this video, type I love Jesus in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more blessings. So who was Isaiah, often referred to as the St. Paul of the Old Testament? Isaiah was likely from a distinguished Jewish family. His impressive education is evident in his rich vocabulary and eloquent style. His writings are broad in scope and beautifully expressed. Isaiah was closely connected to the royal court. Although his messages against forming alliances with foreign powers were not always well received. As a poet and prophet, Isaiah was unwavering, sincere, and deeply compassionate. Often likened to a miniature Bible, Isaiah has been dubbed the Shakespeare of the prophets and is frequently referred to as the evangelical prophet due to his remarkably clear and detailed messianic prophecies. His writings about Christ sound more like those of a New Testament author than an Old Testament prophet. Isaiah's messianic prophecies are more explicit and detailed than those found in any other Old Testament book, covering many aspects of Christ's person and work during his first and second comings, often blending the two. The Old Testament contains over 300 prophecies about Christ's first advent, and Isaiah contributes significantly to this number. The odds of even 10 of these being fulfilled by one person are a statistical marvel. Isaiah 52, 1353, 12 stands as the central passage in the consolation section of Isaiah, containing five stanzas that present different aspects of Christ's saving work. These include Christ's wholehearted sacrifice, his perfect character, his atonement that brings peace with God, his payment for the people's transgressions, and his death for the effects of sin. Verses like Isaiah 9, 6, 7, and 53, 6 are particularly significant. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it, and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were first discovered, their contents led to many sensational claims. Some believed the scrolls contained hidden references to Jesus, while others argued that the scrolls proved Christianity was rooted in the teachings of the Essene community. One early claim from the 1950s made by a scholar studying the scrolls suggested that a figure called the Teacher of Righteousness was a precursor to Jesus. This teacher was said to have been tortured to death and supernaturally reappeared. These claims caused a stir, but further study debunked them. The verb initially translated as reappear was more accurately rendered as appear, with no supernatural implications. Most scholars agree that the term refers to the wicked priest, not the teacher of righteousness, and there is no prediction of resurrection for this figure in the scrolls. 
Over the years, other theories emerged, including claims that the gospel story of Jesus was fictional and based on the teacher of righteousness. These theories were also dismissed, as the scrolls contain no teachings suggesting that the teacher of righteousness was crucified or resurrected. Another controversy arose when a scholar claimed that a fragment of the war scroll mentioned a messiah being pierced. This led to speculation that Christianity's teachings were derived from the scrolls. However, further analysis debunked this claim, revealing that the scroll depicted the Messiah as a triumphant figure, not a suffering one. Some theories suggested that Jesus and John the Baptist were influenced by the Essenes, a Jewish sect, but no evidence supports this. In fact, a close examination reveals significant differences between the teachings of the Essenes and those of the New Testament. In 1972, a scholar named Jose O'Callaghan claimed to have found a fragment of the Gospel of Mark among the Greek fragments in Cave 7. While this theory has not been widely accepted, some experts still consider it plausible. Though it remains unproven that any part of the New Testament was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls, the possibility cannot be entirely ruled out. The Dead Sea Scrolls remain a fascinating piece of history, captivating believers as a wondrous find and leaving skeptics to view them as fragments of fiction. Ultimately, the question remains, who do you believe? If you've made it to this part of the video, you may qualify for our exclusive membership. This members-only area gives you access to videos we cannot share with the general public. To learn more, click the link in the description, pinned comment, or visit our homepage. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting us by clicking the Super Thanks button below. Your support helps us continue sharing the transformative story of Jesus.